Carl and Lou here from Games, Brains and Headbang Life. GBHBuild.com for sure. It is the nasties and we have come to one of the more famous ones. One of the more beloved ones. It is Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. Also known as the Living Dead at Manchester Morgue for us in the UK. And I've never heard this title. Don't open the window. Mm. The only part of the movie I can relate that to is the car. Yeah. Which is such a random reason to have a fucking title. Don't open the window. Oh, that's weird. Fucking it's random. Dope, it's another dope one though, isn't it? Yeah. 1974 Spanish Italian science fiction zombie horror film written and directed by Georges Grau and star Ray Lovelock, Arthur Kennedy and Christina Galbo. This is one of the more beloved ones because it is just got such a cool tone that almost feels Hammer Horror-esque mm. at times, particularly because of its location, filming location. Yeah. That's a major part of it, being in the English country. You've got a hammer feel to yeah. it. And it's shot very, very nicely in nice. relation to yeah. that. It's got a lot of the British dry humour about it, yeah. but it's also a classic zombie tale. I saw it when I was very, very young. And I remember liking it, but finding it quite dry and boring in places. Older, I feel the same. Mm. I think it's good. I think it's very good at times. I particularly like a lot of the gleeful moments. Yeah. And storytelling of it. I particularly liked the characters. But I still think it can be very dry. Mm. And I also think it can be quite boring. This was your first watch. Yeah. I did enjoy it. I said some, I agree with you on certain parts. Just a bit ploddy at points. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. I wanted a bit more. Just keep, keep the energy up a little bit. Yeah. Because when it was good, I was like, oh, yeah, it's clever. Um, some of the points felt quite modern. With like the way the zombies were kind of like... like created and mm -hmm. formed that felt quite modern what we're looking at today and certain problems it's different yeah yeah different that was the word yeah different different way of creating your zombies yeah um yeah we'll say that then it's basically mm -hmm. focuses on two people who are harassed by like a local police in english countryside because they're implicated in murders uh being committed by some zombies mm -hmm. who have been brought to life by basically this weird farming tool which is designed to kill insects via mm -hmm. ultrasonic radiation yeah and this radiation pumping into the ground is bringing the dead back to life. Yeah. That's I like that. different as fuck. Yeah. For 1974 as well. Yeah, and like, again, like with um, other films, like, you know, new inventions and new technologies. Yeah, you probably would get people mucking around with stuff like that rather than spraying chemicals. Let's try, we've got ultrasonic radiation. Let's try that. Yeah. So. Yeah, particularly from this era, we're a bit more experimental. Mm. This is fascinating. In total, the film was released under more than 15 or 16 different titles internationally. Oh my God. Now, I say 15 or 16 because you find two different ones online. Mm. Some say 15, others say 16. Yeah. But either way, what the fuck? Yeah. 15 ones. <laughs> I wish I could have found the list of all the yeah. different titles. I couldn't. I only found three. But what the fuck? A lot of them are obviously going to be foreign titles, foreign mm -hmm. language titles yeah. anyway. Uh, it's become a cult picture. That much should be clear by now. I suspect if you're watching this, you're very aware of this movie. Maybe you know it best as I did, The Living Dead at Manchester yep. Moor. But we are going to run this review under the title Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, mm -hmm. simply because that is the one it's predominantly known as mm -hmm. elsewhere. There were a couple of cool interesting tidbits that I found about this that I thought were really interesting. This one, director George Grau purposely cast an actress known for having a flat chest in the role of the nurse so that a fake chest piece could be applied and the zombies could tear into it for a death scene. I thought that was fucking great. <laughs> so what he's doing there, and a good example of this is, don't go near the park. Mm -hmm. the, the beginning of that, don't go near the park, if you remember our nasty for that. At the beginning there was a woman with a fairly substantial chest size, mm. killed, and her shirt has turned over, turned, ripped open, yep. and suddenly she's got no boobs at all. It's completely flat mm -hmm. with not even any nipples because obviously there was a chest piece attached and the zombie could tear into it. Oh, yeah, The, the guard yeah, man yeah. could tear into it. We laughed about it at the yeah. time. So to hide, get around that, he's like, all right, I'm going to cast someone who's flat-chested mm. so when, after the fact, it, it won't look weird. It it's, it's a little detail. We're like, okay, interesting okay. that you really cared a lot that about much. that. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. Um, also, the cemetery scenes, I thought this was great. In the film was shot at a, at a historical English graveyard where Robin Hood's little John is said to have been laid to rest. Oh, Okay. Nice little fact, Hoyd. Yep. It's even more, though. The production experienced trouble when tourists arrived to see the crew and their garbage hanging around the cemetery. Complaints were made and the crew were forced to do all the cemetery shots in 24 hours. 
And a lot of them take place in that cemetery. Mm. So that's a quick, quick turnaround. The film's strange music is partially made of moaning and breathing sounds. Made by the director, George Grau. Oh, okay. He also did the noises for the zombies. Yeah. Oh, I like that. The English tagline. Oh. To avoid fainting, keep repeating, it's only a movie, only a movie, only a movie, only a movie. That's... Ripped off from? Yeah, the... the oh. Wes Craven's The Last House on the Left, yeah. the advertising campaign yeah, for that. Yeah, I'm not thinking... Fuckers. <laughs> hate that. That's yeah. Really well, that's, that's annoying. You couldn't... Mm, I think you could have done something a bit more British than that. It's I a bit... No, I think you could have done something a bit more obviously British within that. It's a bit crap to just rip off someone else's advertising yeah, campaign, you know? Yeah, I've done things like War of the World and other things like that. I've done like, kind of like that kind of spookiness by governor it's zombies yeah I'll keep calm and no because that thing no that no that, later, that, that, yeah that's but, much later no but it's like a bit more obviously British but yeah that's a bit of a rip off obviously so yeah the film opens with these cut random shots of Manchester City back in the 70s where it's just snap cut snap cut snap was showing yeah. life and showing British people going about their life and yeah. so on and we thought we were kind of like okay this is kind of a lot of fun looking at the, you know the city back in yeah. the day and stuff like that and then you randomly cut to like a streaker who just takes her clothes off and runs through traffic. We were like, what the fuck? Yeah, what was going on there? Was that like, was it something going on in the 70s that during the time it made more sense? Was there some protest where people did that? I don't know. It's it's, it's pretty odd. random. Yeah, yeah, that's the word, random. Like, just jammed in there. and it It's doesn't... almost like you went, well, we've got to have some nudity and this is the only way we're going to get it. And just like a bit like a music video or like an arty. It, the, the whole film is quite arty, so maybe that's what they're trying to go for. Like, oh, look at the hip 70s urbane city and... Well, yeah. Mm. What is George if not a bit of a hipster? Mm. Oh, yeah. So George, the main character, he's closing his antique shop in Manchester, planning to take a trip to the Lake District where he's going to a new house with some friends. Mm. George. Oh, George, man. Mm -hmm. God, I love him. He is... He's a lot of fun in this movie. Yeah. He is a lot of fun. His patter, his behaviour... Directness. Is directness quite is quite good to watch. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed him. Because on the way, his motorcycle, he stops at some gas, but his motorcycle ends up being backed over by Edna mm. when she reverses on yeah. a Mini Cooper. This is the part where you kind of quickly fall in love with him. As he's very, very blunt with her. It's yeah. like, well, he's he, he doesn't give a shit over knocking of his motorcycle. No. He arranges to have it fixed and he'll pick it up Monday. And then he gets in the car and she's like, what are you doing? He's like, well, you've run over a motorcycle. Are you going to give me a lift Yeah. So, oh, to oh. the town? And she's like, oh, okay. But on the way, she, you know, they have a little chat back and forth. He's quite blunt. Not rude, mm. but he... What I thought was really interesting, what I guess I like about him, is this sort of character, this angle, you expect them to get in the car and be like, all right, love, mm. how you doing? You want to see my British balls and stuff like yeah. that? He isn't that. He calls her love a lot, but in a British way. Yeah. In fact, he, he's just very dismissive of her. He doesn't really mm. give a shit about who she is. Yeah, and I found it, I found it quite annoying. So I was like, mm. I like the fact he was quite direct with her and the fact that she was confused about what, why, why are you taking me where we're going and stuff. It's like, no, no, this is where we're going. She's like, why? What? I find her questioning quite annoying. Yeah, and it gets worse as well because when they're nearing uh, a town called Southgate, she stops them and is like, oh no, please, can we go to Southgate first mm. so I can go visit my troubled sister? She's like, you can drop me off there and you can take the car and to where you want to go. Plan. And he's like, you're going to make me late. Yeah. Like, and you can convince me. Yeah, we're, like, we're sitting there going, you fucking ran over his you bike. Exist, yeah. Oh man. But he ends up agreeing. He ends up agreeing uh, to take her there mm. because... Ultimately, he is a nice guy yeah. to a degree. Uh, but he ended up coming to a dead end run and getting lost alongside a river while searching for a house. Uh, this is where you talk about the shots, man. Like, how well this looks. The mm. countryside, how pretty it yes. is. How nice it yeah. is. I think I'm looking, I want to go to that. I want to go to that place. It looks lovely. Oh, the church on the hill, like that thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the little pit they go past. The little lake, the little river. Yeah, the river when he goes oh. up to the farmhouse. Because George ends up crossing that river on foot, yeah. leaving Edna where she is, where he's going to a farm that asks for directions. Mm. Completely, completely believable. Absolutely mm. fine. And it's there he runs into several men from the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm. This is the machine we're talking about. Basically, it's a giant, it's a tractor. Mm. A big tractor that they've kind of stuck a few fake bits on yeah, to make, to make it look a bit like yeah. uh, a different machine. And they, it's, it, it's in the field with the farmer. He asks for directions, the farmer starts to show him, but George is inquisitive about the machinery. Mm. And he explained, look, it's going to kill insects all around, using ultrasonic radiation. It's all very straightforward. I like it. I like the explanation because we quickly learn what the machine is and George is inquisitive. I think you would ask. You'd be like, hey, what the fuck was that? Yeah. And I think it kind of, it kind of shows George's character. I feel like George is a bit like, um, 
quite modern thinking. Mm -hmm. He's a young man. He's quite modern thinking because he's kind of like it seems. Well, why are you killing the insects? Like it's kind of he doesn't see the whole f agricultural business no. side. He's more like. Oh, then... Fuck, yeah, because it, it, it's got an... Uh, there is an underlying ecological damage message in this because yeah. he comments upon the fact about that as well. Mm. You are right. That's mm. um, It's an underlying theme running through this movie mm. where about doing, like, ecological damage yeah. using machinery and radiation and stuff like that. Yeah. And George makes some cutting remarks about it because he keeps getting the ire of these two workers as yeah. well. He comes back... He will worse later on. Yeah. But they don't like his questioning and his sort of tone yeah. when it regards to the damaging the insects and the wildlife and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. Again, it just makes them more likeable. Yeah. Yeah. Like Edna, waiting in the car. She's a chill in the car. Is attacked by a man who basically emerges from the river. He's covered in water. He's mm -hmm. wet. He's got this kind of rope around him and he's got a sullen face. Doesn't say anything and just tries to attack her. This is what we're talking about, the rolling up of the window where it's like, is that what he mean by the yeah. other title? Don't open the window. window? She ends up running out the other side of the car yeah. and running to where George is coming down from the farm. She runs to George, man, this man, that, whatever. Obviously, the man's now completely vanished. Yeah. Don't get that. Yeah. Don't get that. It's just like, why would he have vanished? Why and, would he not attack both of them? And he's Edna, a zombie. Yeah, and Edna's already, like, comes across as a bit, like, high maintenance. Away in the yeah. fairies, almost to a degree. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the constant George kind of, like, he, see, he almost sees her as, like, a, a little bit, like, What's the word I'm looking for? Where she doesn't doesn't live in the real world. Welcome to the real world, Edna. Yeah. That kind of thing. Where he's quite, I said, short, sharp talking and things like mm -hmm. that. Doesn't suffer fools easily. Yeah. But he's still kind to her. He's like, all right, we'll have a look around, that kind yeah. of thing. But the man's just not there. We should say this poor actor, all his scenes had to constantly be drenched with water because it always looked like he was waterlogged. <laughs> the poor fella. Oh, man. Like that. It, well, yeah, oh. it was not nice. But he does do zombie quite well. Mm. It is an old school type of zombie where it's not about rotting flesh. It's not about that kind of thing. It's more just pale, yeah. and the fact, recently dead. And the fact they said he was a homeless dude as well. was like, well, he just like... Because he's asking for money, isn't he? Yeah, that's what she thinks it is at first. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, he's some kind of homeless dude. And like, I mean, some it could be construed as that. Yeah. Like the way he's shuffling and he's not quite with it. He might be drink, drunk and yeah. homeless and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Because it's a bit ill. Yeah. It, it is all a very, very solid setup. We should also add an important angle in this movie is that this machine is the recently dead. Mm. They make a point of saying that. So like that's why there's a freshness to the corpses. Mm. And I think that's quite a good way to get around any sort of makeup mm. issues as well. But do you remember Edna had a sister? Remember? Yeah. We need to go back to that. Yeah. Her sister is Katie, a drug addict, mm -hmm. who's arguing with her for talk of her husband, Martin. She's not happy that Martin's arranged for Edna to come in. So basically, quickly established, without it being said, another good angle from the film, mm. that Martin, worried about Katie's drug addiction, has called Edna to come help support. They're going to work together and basically force her to go cold turkey. Yeah. She appears to be trying to get clean. Mm. But not doing a great job of that. She ends up sneaking in and trying to shoot up in the garage afterwards. We yeah. see her starting to cook heroin, yeah. basically. And you're like, okay, this all makes sense. Mm. Um, you don't get a lot of detail about Martin. He's very aloof to her yeah. and stuff like that, you know? And he's like, oh, I'm going to go do some photos. He goes to, like, some waterfall down by their remote cottage. Very nice-looking area. Mm -hmm. Takes some photographs. Uh, but Katie, when she's, when this is when she's cooking up, mm -hmm. is attacked by the same man who, Edna, the homeless mm -hmm. zombie man. He appears there, ends up attacking Katie. She runs to where Martin is, mm -hmm. and they both get attacked, and Martin is killed by the man. Yeah. All while you get this cool thing of where, like, the camera keeps flashing... Yeah. Flashing because it's going off. It's a cool little it's touch. Nice, nice it's a nice bit. little location. Yeah. I, I, I think with Martin and Katie, yep. I get the impression like he, that she was like his muse for a little while. Ah. And st I think he took photos of her like it was vulnerable and she was all like, it was like heroin chic and obviously when it got too much, I feel like he was like, oh shit, we've gone a bit too far of it because it was like, the photos was a bit like, Bit, um, bit questionable, like you couldn't have them in the coffee table, could you? Oh, you're no. well done for picking yeah. up on that. You're right, there's a point later on, shortly after this, where the detective is looking for photos and there's pictures of Katie, I say, in an almost artsy way, but mm. they're clearly not. She's proper, she's got yeah, yeah. issues, yeah. So, you, you really well done, mm. yes, yeah, real well done for picking mm. up on that little detail. You say it, it makes complete sense to mm. me. Uh, Katie, after Martin is killed, runs away. George and Edna, Edna arrive, and of course, the man's gone again. Mm. I don't love that. Yeah. The disappearing just act. Gone. Just gone. No, like a, a glimpse of someone that could be a homeless dude that's mm -hmm. on the rampage. Yeah, yeah. 
They end up, of course, reporting the death and the police arrive. Now, the police in this movie are dickheads. They are horrendous. Oh, yeah. man, they are horrendous at their job. But also, the police sergeant is just a knob who immediately, immediately just goes, well, you did it, to Katie. Yeah, is that uh... And don't get me wrong, when he's hammering a point home, you could argue he's got more than enough to go on. Yeah. But do you know what he's missing? Proof. Yeah. But that doesn't yeah. seem to matter to him. No. And that's just like, why are you such a knob? Yeah. You know? Um, and he also basically suspects George and Edna of being involved mm. and forces, says, George, you can't leave. George, yeah. if you do not leave Southgate, you've got to say, stay here. But George realises, oh, Martin's camera is going off. We can get ourselves out of oh, this yeah, by film. taking the film and having it develop because yeah. he doesn't trust the police. Mm. He's damn right to not trust the police he because if he sense, wants to yeah. let that stick and the camera then shows this man, and this police sergeant wants to let it stick because, on Katie because she's a heroin addict. Mm-hmm. Just dispose of those pictures. Yeah. There's corruption, basically. Yeah. You know? And Mar- um, George is aware of that. And I like that. Like, I love his smartness. It's like, okay, it's a good yeah. idea. Uh, Katie ends up having a breakdown after being harassed and accused. Mm-hmm. And all the things that's happened were, and ends up being hospitalised. He's just like, police, you're the worst. Yeah. At that same hospital... We end up finding out that recently born babies have been seemingly affected by this radiation mm. and got a bit violent and bitey. Yeah. That does create like a fun that. image in your head. Yeah. It doesn't go any further than yeah. that, but it is, does create a fun image, yeah. doesn't it? You know, you're like, oh, okay. Psycho children. Yeah. yeah. Back at the chemist, they collect the photos, um, but for some reason, the dead man doesn't appear in any of the pictures, just mm. not in any of the pictures. And I thought, what? Yeah. I, I, I was just like, what? And it's almost a bit like, why even have, why even go through the developing pictures part? Not to have that. Not yeah. to have it. If you, if, you, oh. if you know you can't have him appear because it will exonerate and confirm your story, yeah. which fucks up the rest of the story, just have it so that the police take the film off him then. Or just have and it we the, never see it. Or just have it that the film like... Damage falls damage. in the water. The yeah. camera falls in the water. Yeah. So you Done. can't, yeah, end of. Yeah. But they do find out here that the man they're talking about was apparently a local bum, a vagrant, yeah. who drowned in the river. They find that in the newspaper from mm-hmm. the shop o- owner. The sergeant, obviously having found that the film was taken, has traced them to here, arrives, takes the photos, and is a bit like, well, there you go, no man, eh? Mm-hmm. You know? The couple leave and he sends one of his men to tail them. Yeah. One of the awful people at tailing where it's like, yeah, you're driving really close behind them all the yeah, way. On like yeah, on quite streets. <laughs> but they end up going to the graveyard and uh, into a room where in the chapel they find like an empty, half-eaten meal as if someone was in the middle of something and then disappeared. They follow noises into a crypt and they end up getting startled by the body of uh, a murdered person. Um... And the vagrant zombie is in there as well. He then ends up bringing other bodies that are like lying in in stew, yeah. ready to be buried. Mm. He ends up bringing them to life by wiping his blood or touching their eyes with the blood on his fingers. Mm. I thought that was odd. Didn't yeah. really get that. No, I, yeah, it's kind of like a level of how? What? It's almost voodoo-esque to a degree. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It is what it is. We need some more alive. But the pair managed to make a hole so they can escape from. Edna goes up first. Uh, she finds herself in a pit while the zombies are holding George back. There's this really long scene mm. where she's trying to climb up out of the grave, the open grave, yeah. and George is just sort of being held on by the zombies who won't really do anything. It's holding his legs. Yeah, so I And it get does him. keep cutting back and forth. It's yeah. a bit long. But George manages to get free, follows her out, and the zombies obviously chase, but they get out of the grave. They end up themselves locking themselves in the room afterwards, but there's the, 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 the back in the excuse me, <clears throat> back in the original room, mm. away from the zombies. But the police that was following him has come along and he mm. tries shooting some of the zombies. Doesn't do anything. No. Doesn't do anything. Mm. He tries to make a run for his police raider. He dropped while being initially attacked. But is caught by the zombies and this is where we get one of the more violent scenes. He's yeah. kind of torn apart and we see them eating his organs and yeah. things like that. So we do get this kind of um, traditional zombie flesh yeah. eating. yeah. Come back to that. From that, the dead end up smashing their way into the room and George throws a little oil lamp, setting them all on fire, mm. burning them to a crisp, escaping to the car where George tells her to go to the police mm. and, and report this. You are a bit like, ah, but the zombies are burned, the bodies are burned, it's not going to look great. Yeah. It's not going to look great. There's already been like, questions about what's going on. Exactly, yeah. it's not going to, you kind of already know what's gonna, that where this yeah. is going and you're like, shit. Shit. So he sends Edna off to the police, mm. but him now convinced that the machine is at fault, mm. decides that's where he's going to go. 
Ed arrives at her brother-in-law's farm and he's been met by Martin, who is now a zombie as well. Mm -hmm. But she runs him over as she escapes. George finds her after smashing, going to smash up the machine. Um, he arrives at the machine, he argues with the men. Mm. They're all kind of like, and he just goes a bit psycho on them. Enough yeah. to scare them off. Yeah. Just sort of bangs it around a bit. It's yeah. one of those hit it with a wrench a few times. Yeah. That'll fix it. That'll break it. <laughs> but yeah, Edna, after escaping Martin, George meets up with her at a petrol station where he drops her off. And we get this weird scenes between mm. the owner of the petrol station and stuff like that. Edna's kind of gone catatonic a little bit at this stage yeah. as well. He then grabs a can of petrol. He's planning to go set fire to the last of the zombies. But unfortunately, he's caught in a police trap when he arrives back to set Martin's body on fire. Yep. The ones he killed there. Mm -hmm. Uh, the police, there's a copper on the floor and he goes to investigate the police officer who stands up and it turns out they set a trap for him and yeah. he's arrested. And you're like, well, this doesn't look great. No, it's going to be quite hard to explain this. It doesn't look no. great at all. Unfortunately, the machine as well, we then see it's been repaired and it's been turned on and apparently he's got a wider scope now as well, yeah. something they did earlier on. Ends up bringing to life a number of bodies in the nearby morgue. And it's strange because this set of sequences that I'm flying through mm -hmm. is the movie moving at top gear. Yeah. When we get to this latter portion, it really does ramp up. Oh, yeah. So when we said like slow and boring and plodding, it tends to relate to the early scenes yeah. and the build Getting more than there. anything else. Yeah. The Katie, the Martin stuff, mm -hmm. that angle, the police stuff. Now we're here mm -hmm. and we're reaching the end game. The movie's like, boom, off we go. Oh, yeah. So we're flying through these scenes and these sequences as well. You go here, I go there. This is what happens. All done at night with this great looking mist mm. that's got adds a real nice touch to it, you know? Spooky. George escapes in a police car, which uh, we did laugh. Oh my God, they are so bad, these police, how yeah. quickly he's able to escape. But again, you're like, George, this is not going to look good for you yeah. when they find you. He finds out that Edna's been taken to a hospital where the local morgue is and obviously worried about it, he heads there. Mm. She has been sedated while George is obviously being chased down by the police. He drives to the hospital and the zombies are running rampage for the hospital. Yeah. There are some good looking zombies. Yeah. I always remember the one that was, it was used as a front cover mm. for some variations, which is the one with the bandage yeah. around his mm -hmm. head. Yeah. Uh, that sort of thing. And there are some gory, violent scenes of people being killed. This is, what, what makes this extra violent? It's the hospital setting. Yeah. The clean setting. Some blood these, stands out. Yeah, it always does. Yeah. That's how I always like that when they have like that kind of crisp white and then the blood and if it just looks completely out of, out of kilter. And Absolutely kind of it, does. And it does kind of, when you picture it, like people are ill and dying. And it's a place of healing, this, yeah. Yeah, it's It's kind supposed of extra, to be a place of healing, yeah. right? It's extra grim. Yeah, it is extra grim, including that Katie gets killed by the zombies mm. and ends up attacking Edna as a zombie. Katie as a zombie doesn't look great. Mm. It's one of the ones where I was a bit like, oh, that's not, it's not, didn't not do brilliant, right, you know? Yeah. George arrives, starts setting fire to the zombies, but in a cool twist, He's too late to save Edna as he finds Edna and mm. she attacks him as a zombie. And I was like, hey, that's like... I didn't, yeah, they didn't have them running off together into the zombie. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. it would be okay. Mm. Um, and he ends up pushing her into the room that's on fire where she goes up in flames. This effect is terrible. Mm. It's a horrible effect where it's clearly like she's not in a room of fire. The fire's on the front of the screen and she's standing behind it. Yeah. It's not good, no. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But when George turns around, he's then shot several times by the police sergeant. And you're like, oh. you knew it was coming and you yeah. knew it was going to happen. Because what does this look like at this stage? It just, it just looks like a psychopath running around, killing and setting fire yeah. bodies. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. Unfortunately, you've got to see it from the police's angle, the sergeant angle, as well when you've already got this view that he doesn't like George. Because yeah. we should point out, he uses some incredibly derogatory terms mm. to describe George earlier in the movie yeah. we were like oh you prick yeah. you know I'm not going to repeat a no, derogatory but... term for a gay person yeah. you know what that, one that is. might be said more in the 70s yeah. so yeah he kills George you're like oh man mm. oh but there is a gleeful fun ending in this it's all over as it seems all the zombies yeah. have been set on fire and the sergeant's like he says something about he wishes he could have he, he could have killed George a second time and he'd mm. come alive I wish you'd come alive like the zombies you said existed so I could kill you again you're like, okay, that's an interesting yeah. line. He goes to stay the night at a hotel in Southgate. And in his room, he ends up finding a zombie by George waiting for him. And tries to shoot him, but George just keeps approaching. Oh, yeah. And the last shot of the, of the movie is in the field. You see the machine still working away. Mm. So you're like, well, it isn't going to end, is it? It'll keep going. Spread. It's a fun ending. It's a fun mm. ending with, that's downbeat. 
because of everyone you like effectively dying, even Edna. But then that kind of that does link into like say the whole ecological thing of like it would just keep getting like it did the revolution of like using chemicals yep. and mechanical stuff just keeps getting bigger and bigger like industrial farming and everything else. Yeah. So there is that little nod to it. It's not just going to end with one person being no no down with this thing. It's going to just keep going. Yep. It is a, it is a fun movie to watch mm. when it really gets going, particularly mm. the latter part of it. What it does well, and what is really interesting for a video nasty, for a nasty, and a movie from this era, is that what it does really well is characters mm. more than anything else. Like, almost secondary to the horror aspect. Yeah. As a zombie film, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. It's all right it's at special. best. Do you know what I mean? At best, it's not. they're not particularly interesting or exciting no. or that threatening no. of zombies, which is a major, major flaw in it. Yeah. But why you end up liking it, or at least why I find I like it as well, is I find myself caring mm. about its two major leads. Edna might be annoying, but I gave a shit about her. Yeah, yeah. I suppose she had a lot of stress going on with her sister. So there's mm-hmm. that kind of taking it out of context of she's got a lot on her mind. So yeah, give her, give her the benefit of doubt that. Really like um, George. Yeah, I really like George. Really like George. I feel like the pacing doesn't help when you've got like a rural, rural, oh, I can't say a rural it, setting. A rural setting. Uh, yeah. Because in the city, it's boom, boom, boom. You turn fast turn, paced life. Because yeah, because it's fast paced life in in life and in death. The zombies are going. It's going to be tons of zombies. Yeah. Shit. But you go to a rural setting, what like one bus an hour kind of countryside. They're going to take a while to get places. In yeah. big numbers. They've so got a bus pass. That kind of thing. They've got a bus pass. <laughs> bus pass is gone. They're only up to a day. But I really like the setting, though. I Ooh, love I the country it. look. I, I love the places. That, I want to visit that village. Yeah, we'll have to look into that and find out exactly where it is cool. and maybe go on a road trip some point next year to try and find do it. That. Of course the, there are. The, the, the one in American Werewolf, that pub that's in that, that place in the moors. Uh, there must be people that go to these places for, like, film location tours. Of course, of course there yeah. is. Not even there must be. Of course there, there is. Of course yeah. there is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so the location's fantastic. Mm. Characters, but even on the other side, the police sergeant, one of... He's a bell end, mm. but I disliked him heavily, mm. which means you're doing something right about yeah, the character. You're, right, yeah. you're making me feel something about that. Yeah. Even Katie and the drug addict angle and stuff like that, mm. I gave a shit about. I was interested. Yeah. This is good writing. And I feel, I feel like the whole police part of it. It feels like it, they probably just annoyed. They were annoyed by George's because George was smart. City boy. They didn't like him because he was smart. They don't get. They don't get stuff going on. They're it's like, oh, our version yeah. of we don't like your type of people around in America. It's our version of you come from the city. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. It's our version of that. You have it. In, people have it in America. If you're watching from America, you know it. You go to a rural town mm. in Texas and you're from fucking one of the cities. Mm. Oh, we don't like your type around here. Mm. You don't belong here. That kind of thing. You're a city boy. You know mm. that aspect. It's the same thing here. You know we're, we're from in, London. We read it in pubs. In we it in, we went. To a pub in Margate, yeah. Walked in, everyone turned around like, The fuck oh, are you doing here? Yeah, we're yeah. Like, we only come in to buy a pint, buy a bo- like, yeah. Like, literally, mm. to spend some money. We're like, Okay, turn like, around, had there been it's it's the piano screech, it's the piano <laughs> stopping, you know, the violin screech as everything yeah. just stops and stuff like that. It's proper fucking weird yeah. shit, and that's what this movie does here as well. Like I said, when he attacks George verbally. He, it's all about where George is from and the mm. lifestyle he lives based off of how he looks and yeah. things like that. And it's like, oh, fuck you, you dickhead. Yeah. But like, it fits in this movie. Yeah. And here's the thing. What I do really like as well is we're not seeing bad policing. No. In regards to the end results. By the end, it doesn't look good for George. No. Edna. It really fucking doesn't. Yeah, the police of policemen doesn't want to believe anything because he's already made up his mind yeah. which is a big problem in that kind of job mm. but by the end it's like from his angle I mean it's, you you provide all the evidence you've got mm. to you know your superiors in the court and all that they're gonna be like yeah this dude was a psycho running around killing people and sat fire on bodies yeah good job yeah could have done it quicker rather than let him kill more but hey good job anyway yeah. do you know what I mean that's how it mm. looks so that's really cleverly mm. done the ecological aspect while underplayed is interesting mm. Before a movie from 1974, but the idea of this experimentation and what it could do. It is a stretch. Yeah. And like I said, there's this weird, the baby angle is a little bit unusual, mm. just because it's like there and then it's not. Yeah. But it's enough. And what I like about those is enough is it's let your imagination go. Yeah. You're like, okay, all right. All right, that's interesting. They kind of to touch on that in like the, like in the brood having like weird. Yeah. Weird, you're getting kids involved in like this kind of stuff. I don't know if it's like more of an English. <laughs> I don't know if I mean like. <laughs> evil children evil evil children yeah. it's it's like I'm torn to 
kind of wrap this one up in like, oh, you should see this. If you've never seen it, definitely check it out. It's quite unique. Yeah. Purely based on the fact that it's English. in the UK. Yeah. Which adds a nice difference to a nasty being banned mm. and being in trouble here. You can see the movie completely and cut these days. Yeah. And it's not an issue. So it's nice to have us involved in that. Particularly from 74. So that movie was released and it was out there yeah. for a very long time before it came across the fucking Mary White House and Daily Mail and all yeah. that bollocks and the BBFC's section but it's completely tamed by today's standards the violence and gore that exists in it is all the stuff you see in any zombie movie ever but nowhere is harsh yeah. the nudity is just that streak at the start yep. that's it I think maybe someone I think if I was to point out other things that may have run, caught, caught the ire in regards mm. simple fact that you see her cooking up heroin yeah that we see her take it out of the bag we see her hot spooning yeah and, you do, and when you watch programs now you get everything listed on top contains drug references yeah. sexual it, it does tell you that so they obviously are aware of they don't want to show this you don't violence. see her injected because she gets interrupted but we yeah. see the point where she's holding a hot spoon over the flame and the liquid is the, the powder is melting into liquid like yeah. they, we're getting close there yeah. I also think the fact that you reminded me of it the angle the moment where the the, um, the sergeant is looking through the pictures mm. of the kind of distressing photos taken yeah. of Katie now that's quite ooh mm. like mentally damaging yeah. imagery stuff like that you're like okay those are the little tiny little things I wonder where it's just the stuff that got it over the mark where it's like don't really this movie isn't great because of this or whatever and stuff like that oh that's that's it yeah and for like the whole drug use kind of adds another layer of like murkiness to it mm. grimness and obviously like in small towns it's kind of like poked like delving into like small village life a little yeah. bit because I think everyone thinks, oh, it's nice having a country child, but it's like, people still have issues. Still have issues and still have problems and stuff like remote. that. Probably more remote. She's away from her sister. So it's probably even harder sometimes living out there. I also yeah. wonder as well if the tone, the tone of the idea of recently deceased as well. Mm. But doing recently deceased, you create a different kind of feel about the zombies than anything ever elsewhere. It's not mm. a rag maggoty corpse that you can't recognise coming out of the yeah. dead. You do recently deceased and you create areas like morgues and family members and people who are supposed to like have just recently still mm. grieving having their dead come back to life while it's not obviously overly emphasised in the film on that front mm. I think from an angle there's a lot of dark yeah. themes behind that and it makes it a little bit more harsh to watch I think yeah. overall it's a harsh movie I think yeah. it's got tongue in cheek humour mm. very very tongue in cheek yeah. where it's quite dark almost almost yeah black comedy to a degree yeah. um, without making you laugh that in it and I think that's what kind of steps up an extra level yeah as I said at the start I still think it could be very dry mm. particularly the middle portion of the movie yeah where you're kind of trying to get all these angles in place and lead to what's going on mm. but I forgive that more now because I th there's so much character stuff I'm like I'm enjoying this yeah. there's small things when they go to the hotel and the random owl and the phone call and like they do this brilliant thing where when the door closes and the cameraman's still inside. The sound becomes muffled, but it works because it's almost like we're watching, we're with we, them. Yeah, we're supposed to not know. Yeah, that's I love... Like, yeah, that's I, I really I clever. That that. yeah. That's really clever shit. Mm. Let sleeping corpses lie. The living dead at Manchester Mork. Don't open the window. Or whatever other title you know it under. It is well worth checking out in our opinion. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?